Good morning. It's exactly 10.30. Welcome to the Mother's Day service at the Owego United Methodist Church in Owego, New York. And I uh, wish a happy Mother's Day to all the moms, grandmothers, and all the people who have served as mothers uh, who are with us today here at our church in the heart of what I regard as America's coolest town, Owego. Also, uh, happy Mother's Day to all who may be watching this service on Facebook or YouTube. We wish all the mothers um, who have been so important, so inspirational to so many of us over the years, we wish all the best. And of course, we wish the best for all the mothers-to-be going forward. We have a few announcements before we begin our service this morning on our prayer list. Charlie Gilbert, Glenn Alpaw, Doug Worthing, Joan Fisher, and Betty Zeckman. Please keep them in prayer. Also, we ask that you keep in prayer Mary Jenkins, Jack Denmark, and Dave Rogers. Is there anybody else who um, we, we should lift up in prayer this morning? Oh, absolutely. Pastor Jamie, as he uh, continues to um, progress, and also uh, we keep uh, Kathy in our prayers and their entire family. We also have some good news to share. Uh, Dave and Colleen Dewey Wright's oldest daughter, Kendra, is going to be married on June 5th. So that'll be happening in just a few weeks. And Dave and Colleen would appreciate your prayers as the uh, last of the details come together. You can imagine it's uh, a busy and exciting time for everybody in the family. And so we uh, wish them well over the next few weeks as they prepare for the wedding ceremony on June 5th. And now, please prepare yourself to worship our God on this Mother's Day.
Thank you, Colleen. Now, if you're able, please stand and join in our responsive reading. For the joy of human love, friends on earth and friends above, You may be seated. And please remain in the attitude of prayer. This morning we celebrate Mother's Day. We lift up everybody who is with us for worship this morning in this church, and of course, all who are joining us online, whether they're here in Owego, elsewhere in Tioga County, or who knows, they could be watching anywhere right now pretty much in the world, thanks to technology. We pray for everyone within the sound of my voice. We lift up our pastor, Jamie, and his wife, Kathy. We continue to hold them in prayer during these challenging times, and we keep their entire family in prayer. We pray for our former pastors as well. We also thank Pastor Doug for serving us during this time, and we pray for him as well. We pray for our first responders, our law enforcement officers, those who serve in the emergency services, firefighters, EMS crews, those who have been through such a challenging time over the last 15 months responding to COVID and other issues. We pray for those who are still recuperating from COVID. Even though we're making progress, we know there still are people in our community who are dealing with the current struggles or even after effects with uh, some of the lingering symptoms, and we lift those people up. We lift those up who are experiencing challenging times because of employment issues or family issues. Uh, there are so many difficult things that are going on. We've been challenged in ways that many of us have never been challenged before. So we continue to pray for those, no matter what their physical or mental or spiritual situations are. We pray for our government leaders, those here in Owego, Tioga County, Broome County, surrounding counties, and also our state and federal leaders. Give them the strength that they need to do the right thing, to lead our communities and our nation going forward. We pray for peace. Even in a violent society, it seems sometimes peace is so elusive, but we continue to pray for peace within our homes, within our communities, and around the world. And we just pray for a positive, constructive week. We are so grateful that it's now spring. The weather is improving, and we have a sense in our community and across the nation that we are in for perhaps the dawn of a new age, a post-pandemic era. So while we look forward to better times ahead in our nation, we also keep in prayer those in other countries, including it, India and Brazil, that are going through very difficult times because of the pandemic. We ask all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, Bob, for bringing us to the very throne of grace in your prayer. It's a real blessing. Well, now it's uh, time for the children and for the young at heart. You're all welcome to listen in. 
Today I have a story for you. There was a little boy named Joey, and Joey loved Fridays because Friday was Food Friday. Every Friday, Joey would watch for a special little backpack that would be there for him. There'd be others for other kids too. But his had a little sign on it that said, God bless you, Joseph, with love, Antioch Church. That's pretty cool. Mostly, of course, he was looking for his name, Joseph, on there. That's what he really wanted to see. But he, after a while, started to notice all those other words on there. The bag, of course, was to help with his meals over the weekend. Since he got school lunch during the week, he would have a couple of good meals on the weekend as well. Well, one Friday, his mom was looking out the window and saw the big yellow bus pull up in front of the house, and Joey got off, and his good friend Frankie got off with him. But instead of walking to their houses, they sat down in the grass. And Joey reached into his Food Friday backpack and pulled out some fruit snacks and some other things and handed them to Frankie. Joey's mom watched all this happen and when Joey came in, she said, Joey, did you give away your food to Frankie? Well, Mom, uh, only half of it. I wanted to share with him because he said he was really hungry and he wasn't sure what he'd get to eat when he got home and I just wanted him to have some of my food. Am I in trouble? <laughs> oh, Joey, his mom said. No way are you in trouble. That was a wonderful thing that you did. You shared what you have. You gave up some of what you had so that Frankie would have a little more. So he'd have what he needed. She explained that she would call the Antioch Church, and she would see if Frankie couldn't get his own Food Friday bag next week. But she pointed out that on that little sign it says, Love Antioch Church, because the Antioch Church was showing their love for Joey by giving him a little food. And Joey was showing his love for Frankie by giving him some of that food. It's a circle of love that we get to be a part of. And Jesus told us to love one another. And that's an example of how we can all love the folks around us. Shall we pray? Oh God, we thank you for the blessings that come our way, sometimes from a church. And we thank you for the chances we have to be a blessing to those around us and show your love to others. Amen? Amen.
Our scripture reading this morning is from John, the 15th chapter, verses 9 through 17. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends, if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. This I command you, to love one another. The word of God for the people of God. Love. It's Mother's Day. So you knew it was going to come down to that, didn't you? Love. As in, I love those Red Sox. You knew it was going to come down to that sooner or later, right? <laughs> What a joy to find out that Bob over here is a Red Sox fan, too. Look at that. The <laughs> special mask. Even last year, last season, when last was the description of the Red Sox last season. <laughs> but uh, that's not quite the love that I'm talking about, am I? Love, we've kind of trivialized that word, haven't we? We say, I love your hair. I get that a lot, actually. <laughs> Very common for me. I love chocolate cake. So many kind of minor matters. We use that word love to describe it. We just mean we feel a little attracted toward it, or we approve of it, or we kind of like it a lot. Sometimes it only means cute. Hmm? But when Jesus says, I command you to love one another, it wouldn't make sense if he meant, I command you to like one another. You're going to have to go out there and you've got to be attracted to everyone you see. That's my commandment. That doesn't even make sense. Instead, Jesus is calling us to something deeper. And even that phrase, love one another, it shows up on those little wooden signs that we like to show in our homes, right? Those little encouraging signs. You can find it written on tea towels and tea shirts. Even garden gnomes can say, love one another, huh? It shows up everywhere. But like so much in Scripture, if we take 
two little words and pull them out of where they are in the scripture and, and try and make them mean something more or less than they actually do. Just before this, Jesus says, I've said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. So there's something about loving one another that gives us not the giddy, laughing happiness that uh, comes and goes so quickly, but a deep down joy, a deep down sense that it's okay, it's all right, that there is a future, that everything is possible because we know the feeling inside that carries on for days and weeks and months. So if we'll feel joy if we love one another, it sounds like we're going a little deeper than the gnomes here, don't you think? The word for love here is agape. And it often refers to God's unconditional love for us. Indeed, God is agape. So here Jesus is calling his disciples to be caring and loving and helpful to each other without any conditions. The way God is loving and caring and helping us. So, we're not saying we'll do the loving thing if it's easy, but we'll do the loving thing when it's hard to do. If it's fun to do, or if it's painful thing to love another person. We'll do the loving thing if we care deeply for that person and are grateful for their help but will care and help people knowing they will never be grateful in the least. <clears throat> Love one another unconditionally. No ifs, ands, or buts. One amazing example of agape love that has stuck with me for a long time is the love of a mother for that newborn baby. The new mother will say, I love you to the child, and the child will say nothing in return. The new mother will embrace that child and hold and walk around. The newborn will never embrace the mother. The mother will rock and sing her baby to sleep. But the newborn will offer some piercing cries in the middle of the night and interrupt the new mother's sleep. Yeah. Not going to be much appreciation for all the love this mother offers. The mother will produce nutritious milk or formula for the baby, but the newborn produces only one thing. It's an assault on all five of her senses. <laughs> Yeah, there's nothing sentimental about a dirty diaper, is there? <laughs> it is an act of agape love to clean up that baby at that moment. So the new mother does kind and loving things for her baby because she loves that baby in actionable ways, no matter what. 
And some young mothers say they actually don't feel that sentimental love toward their baby. They don't feel that attraction toward their baby that they thought they would feel. And yet they keep loving that child in caring and practical ways. And that's what agape love is. The feelings are optional. The mother of a newborn loves without conditions, no ifs, ands, or buts. Well, there is one little but involved, but never mind. In fact, mothers use and develop some valuable job skills as they are caring for their children. Job skills that are transferable. You may be familiar with the job site LinkedIn. And one of the things they provide is guidance on how to write up a good resume. And one of the things they've always said from the beginning is avoid having any gaps, any times when you're not employed by anyone. Now recently, they suggested to mothers who had had some time as a stay-at-home mom, and so a gap in their resume, that they fill that gap by writing self-employed child care. Yeah. Write the dates when she was a stay-at-home mom. And below it, list the skills that are involved. They suggest multitasking, communication, persuading. <laughs> if you don't get in bed right now, <laughs> listening, research, organization, managing people, collaboration, and the ultimate bomb skill, Negotiation. <laughs> One mom actually wrote in her resume that she demonstrated great empathy towards those under her supervision. In other words, she loved her kids. <laughs> well, it is indeed a work of agape love when a mom is caring for her children. Jesus went on to speak of this agape love when he said that he and the disciples are friends now. Their old relationship was more like teacher and students, more like the experts and the apprentices. Now, Jesus says they are friends. But once again, Jesus isn't talking about some sort of acquaintance. This is an extreme friendship he's talking about. And again, looking at the context of this story, in the broader story of the Bible. Jesus is speaking these things on the evening before he, oh, the evening that he would actually be arrested and thrown in jail. The next day he would be tortured and executed. And so it's at that point that Jesus says, no greater love has anyone than this than to lay down his life for his friends. That is sacrificial love. That is the kind of friendship that he calls the disciples to and calls each of us to. And so it's a kind of love that 
puts one's own needs and concerns aside for a bit and helps the other. Green scarf, green coat, green carnation on it. He searched the airport lobby for a woman that he knew but had never met. It all started a year earlier. There was, they were in a support group together, but it was an online support group. And they all had their pictures and their first names showing up on the screen. But some of the women in the support group decided they'd rather not show their faces and just had their first name on the screen. And one of them, this young man, felt particularly drawn to. Asked her if they could communicate outside of their support group. And so they emailed back and forth and had long phone conversations. The young man decided he was really falling in love with this woman. And he wanted to meet her. She agreed to meet at the local airport and that she would be wearing a green coat with a green scarf and a green carnation. The man was scanning the people at the airport and he finally spotted her across the room. Green coat, green carnation, green scarf, that had to be her. Except he looked her over and thought, she is ugly. Oh, man. Her eyes, her skin, her hair, ugly. What will I do? He thought about get, just turning around and getting on another plane home. Decided, no. I love this woman. And maybe I'm not attracted to the way she looks. I love her. And that matters more than anything. So he went up to the woman and said, uh, Hi, I'm George. It's good to meet you. She said, what are you talking about? Well, the green coat and the scarf. All oh, that, she said. You see that lady over there? She said she'd give me 20 bucks if I'd wear this stuff. <laughs> and she better pay. The man looked over. And there was the most beautiful woman he had ever seen. She explained to him that all her life, anytime someone was friendly toward her, she never knew whether this person really liked her for who she is or if they only loved her for her looks. Now she knew that this man loved her for who she is and not just for her good looks. It is a sacrifice to overlook the less attractive qualities in a friend. And yet, we love that friend even so. Agape love, unconditional love, is not that sappy, superficial feeling that comes and goes. Today, we offer some sentimental but heartfelt signs to moms for a happy Mother's Day. For those who gave up so much as they loved us with agape love. Thanks be to God. Amen.
please join me in our responsive prayer for Mother's Day. For our mothers who have given us life and love, that we may show them reverence and love. We pray to the Lord. For mothers who have lost a child through death, that their faith may give them hope and their family and friends support and console them. For women, though without children of their own, who, like mothers, have nurtured and cared for us. For mothers who have been unable to be a source of strength, who have not responded to their children and have not sustained their families. Loving God, as a mother gives life and nurtures her children, so you watch over your church. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, will honor them always with signs of our love and gratitude. I know it's only traditional, but in many cases, the tables of homes are set and filled by the mothers as a, care, as a way to care for their families. And so we come to the Lord's table where God has a feast prepared for us. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and right, a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. We praise you for making people man and woman, father and mother, to begin this wonderful species that is all over the earth. We thank you that you called those original people good and by implication have shown us all that we are born good as well. We thank you for all the ways that you have come to us even when we turned from you and your faithfulness to us even when we have not been faithful to you. And so we offer you our praise and thanksgiving with the whole church on earth and all the angels in heaven, and we join their unending hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, O God, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, who came among us, lived our human lives as we do, was born and raised by Mary, his mother, and found his way to this table 
And when the supper was over, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. And when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, again gave thanks to you, and gave it to his disciples, and said, this is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood. Take and drink as often as you will for the forgiveness of sins. And so we give you thanks, O Lord, for your Son, Jesus, and for his uh, blessings that come down to us through the centuries. And we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We thank you, O Lord, for the presence and power of your Holy Spirit at work in your church families wherever they may be, nurturing, nourishing, and helping us to grow in you. For we praise you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Now take and eat the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Take and drink the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. We thank God for this holy meal that it might sustain our souls and strengthen our spirits. Amen. As we leave the sanctuary this morning, you may leave your gifts on the offering plates near our exits. We ask God to use our offerings for the good of His church here in Owego and to further the church's mission around our world. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Okay, I'm just going to ask. Yes, okay. <laughs> um, please, uh, there is a uh, bouquet of flowers in the back, and we ask that all women please take a flower following today's service. You may also take a flower for a mother who is not here today, if you would wish. Um, I just mentioned that the postlude today is a wonderful old song that, uh, that Colleen will be playing for us. 
and the words will be printed or published up on the, there it is on the screen and invites you to read along as you hear it and now may God who cares for us day by day whose sacrificial love has brought us to this place go with you and remain with you now and always amen Thank you. 